Hello, everyone. I believe we are live. Hopeful. I'll wait until I've got audio or a check from you guys that audio and everything is working. Um, we're in like 11 minutes ago, the thunderstorm they've been threatening all day that we were starting to doubt finally hit and it's a little crazy right now. So there's a lot of lightning. If I disappear, I'll see you next week because there's nothing I can do if we get a power outage here. I'll be rushing to make sure all my reef tanks are okay. Um, good audio and video is good. So tonight I am working if the thunder doesn't take it or the lightning doesn't take stuff out. Fingers crossed. I am working on Arches Hot Press watercolor paper. This is a five by seven. And I'm going to be doing this with a watercolor base and then colored pencil on top. And this guy, if you want, he is available to bid on over on my website. The link is in the video description. And I've also done a buy it now price. Now, last time I tried buy it now, it made the auction not work. The auctions haven't been working lately anyway. So we will just see if that works. Um, but that link is in the video description if you want to bid on this, if you are within the US. This is five by seven. It will come matted in a nice little black mat, more like that. And um, that makes an overall size of an eight by 10. If you have trouble bidding, it seems like, Nick, you may have to correct me. I believe if you log in, then just exit that page, close the page and then log back or, you know, go back to the thing again, it should let you bid. Um, it seems to be a problem when people are, um, are actually like logging in and staying from taking that link over. I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with my website. I'm the web designer. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can contact, I guess the, the app developer, but right now that seems to be the workaround anyway. Um, so this, I have not pre-stretched or pre-sized this paper because I'm not going to be adding that much water. This is only 140 pounds, so it's not a super, super heavyweight paper, but we should be fine just because it's not, I'm not doing the background, the background's staying white. So there we go. And let's see what else. It is taped down with an acid-free, a pH neutral masking tape. That is important because you want to keep in mind when you use masking tape, like the, the I see people use blue Panthers tape all the time. Heck, I've done it in the past. All of that leaves a little bit of residue on the artwork. And that residue is not acid-free or pH neutral. We don't want that staying long-term because that could cause yellowing over time. Even though we don't see it when we remove the tape, that could be a concern. The alternative, if you don't have tape like this, you can always cut your paper a little bit bigger and then cut off wherever the tape was so that none of that is left over. That actually works out just fine. So that may be worth it to you to go that route versus using, spending more for the low uh, or the pH neutral acid-free tape. Um, does my site require permissions to recognize those that have logged in when switching to the auction page? I have no clue. That is the most advanced question that my mind is like, <laughs> I don't know. I'm a professional. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Nick says that was right. Just click on the place bid link once you've reloaded the auction page. Okay. So hopefully that will work. Um, okay. So let's get started. Now I've got my distilled water over here. These guys are, oh, the color is a hot mess over there. I guess, let's see if we can, whatever. My hands are not really that orange, um, but you can see that the colors actually look okay here. So we're just gonna go with it. But anyway, um, I've got my watercolor. I'm using Schminka, Schminka, Schminka. I think I'm saying that. Who knows? I don't say anything right. And then I've got distilled water. Now here's the important thing. This is what I use for, I have two of these when I work in watercolor. With watercolor, it is unlike any other medium I work in, in that I need a separate container to, to rinse out my brushes and one for just using water that I'm mixing in on the artwork because the dirty water will affect the colors with, color, or with watercolor. Doesn't matter for ink tents, doesn't matter for acrylic painting. There's a video that tells you, you need to use two separate waters for acrylic painting. Dude is making crap up, like just to sound fancy. That isn't an acrylic painting thing. It lets you know he really does not know what he's talking about. But moral of that story, if you've seen that video, you know what I'm talking about. Watercolor does need two separate containers. One to rinse brushes, one to load brushes. Okay, so let's go ahead and take those off. I get them backwards all the time though, so sometimes it'll just get a little dirty and I have to go change the, my water out. But these little mason jars work great. I just keep them all the time by my easel. Okay, and all of the supplies that I'm using tonight are linked in the video description if you're painting along with me. There is also the link to this reference photo, so you are welcome to paint this guy with me. I actively encourage it. Okay, 
reference photo. What do I need? I need some browns. So I'm going to be using these reddish browns here. Now normally what I would like to do is have, and I don't think I have one over here. Oh, this is a sample. Oh, I do have one. So these are really handy to make yourself a little watercolor list so you know what that paint looks like. In comparison, let me grab this, I'll show you if this is correct. So these line up with, let's pull that up, you can see a little bit better. These line up with each other so I know exactly, like if I look at this yellow, that is not, there we go, we can put them next to each other. Look how much darker that looks because it's a little muddy with the other colors I've got on it, but that's the actual color. I also have a star rating so I know which of these colors are going to be light fast. I have this one, this indigo blue is not light fast so I can't use that one. But this lets me know whatever colors are in here except for apparently this one. I don't know why that's blank. And then this bottom section is what matches up with my browns and such. So I can very easily see which colors I want as I'm working. And I usually just keep that little board off to the side on my easel so I can quickly refer to it. Before we get started, we have a, say it quietly, a super chat from Kristen. Look at the boys know. Okay, you guys can come get your super chat. Come. Go boys, thank you. I always say Kristen, it's not Kirsten, Kirsten. Someday I'm gonna get that right. Okay, boys, you got your first super chat of the night. Come on, Wade. There you go. Thank you for drooling on me. Good boys. Okay. Good boy. Now go lay down. Say thank you and lay down. You just, Gibson just burped. Go on, lay down. Boys, pay attention. Greyhounds, by the way, extremely stubborn breed. Lay down. People think that they're stupid because they're so stubborn and they don't really obey that well. No, no, they're just smart enough to know they don't have to listen to you. So that's why, ah, 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 go lay down. That was terrible, mister. Gibson's like, no, I'm just gonna come say hi again. Lay down. Okay, so thank you again for that. Okay, now on to the owl. I'm just gonna start by getting a light layer of yellow on his eye. I've got a bunch of brushes just thrown out over here. Let's see, a little round one should work. That'll work. So this one is a Mimic brush, the Creative Mark, a number six round. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of yellow. Which yellow was that? They're both about the same. I honestly can't tell the difference between these two. So we're just going to fill that in. Oh, that's the pupil, what am I doing? That goes here. Luckily that doesn't matter because I have to put black over it. Look at me not paying attention to my reference photo. There's actually a line that goes across there that I didn't draw in. I'm gonna let that yellow dry though before I fill it in with black. Actually, I can lift some of that. Oh, this brush is dirty. Why is this, did I not clean this very well last time? Apparently not. Let's just go ahead and smudge that. Kind of lift, lift some of that up. Just so that when I go over with a black, I don't end up with super green from having too much white or yellow there. Okay, that works. And while that dries, I'm gonna switch over to a little bit of blue. And this is where I love that I've got my little uh, board over here so I know, don't pick that one, that one's not light fast. The rest of them that I have are. I'm gonna go with the fourth blue over. It looks like a nice phalo blue or something very close. And I just have my paper towel in as I go. I just dab that before I hit the paper so that I don't smudge it everywhere. Just gonna put a little bit there. I'm gonna wipe some of that off. I'm gonna rinse my brush and just lift up some white, or I'm sorry, not white. I'm just gonna let that blue fade out. Now the nice thing is when you plan on going over something like this with a colored pencil, like I'm going to here, I do not have to be very good with this. Like I can be pretty bad at watercolor, like really bad at watercolor and still make it look amazing because the colored pencil will fix anything I screw up. So it's wonderful. But the colored, the great thing about doing the underpainting like this with the watercolors, it saves a ton of time. So let's go ahead and start pulling up some browns. Let's see this brown. Actually, this one looks really good too. And I'm just gonna start laying that in there. I just need to get that fairly dark. That's got way too much water on the brush. 
Now, normally when you work with watercolor, it's gonna be a lot easier if you work flat on a table. I cannot do that because of my back and my neck. So I'm upright at an easel, but that's not going to stop me. I have to adjust my techniques a little bit so that I don't have the paint run all over the place. I can't use as much watercolor. Like if I wanna put the watercolor on thicker, then I need to, um, I need to go ahead and work flat for those small spots. But like as far as a full painting night goes, I cannot handle like working flat long term. And I don't even need this to be perfectly smooth, but I do want my brush strokes to go about the right direction. This colored pencil is gonna hide a lot of this. See how I'm curving that back around the direction of the feathers? I wanna get a little bit lighter in through here. Use a little bit more water. Now watercolor and colored pencil work amazingly well as a mixed media. You guys know, if you've been around for very long, you know I love ink tins. I actually did the design, the tins for the pencils and the blocks, the dolphin and the, the sea turtle. However, colored pencils don't stick real well to it. So if I wanna do a mixed media with colored pencil, watercolor is definitely my go-to. I'm not really sure why colored pencil, or like it's just the difference of the texture, but, but colored pencil does not stick. Like even the ink tins pencils don't stick that great once you get a lot of layers on there. I'm just using this brush. I'm gonna switch to a filbert, a small. I have one over here. You don't belong here. I don't even know why you're in this group. Got brushes all over the place. I could have sworn I saw a filbert earlier. Where is it? It was a mimic. Eh, good enough. So this will give me some of the look of bigger feathers. Again, we're gonna go over all of that with my colored pencil. Pull some of that same reddish brown in. I'm gonna do this closer to this area. Let those fade together. I'm gonna let that overlap a bit. Now I do need this to be a bit darker because when I come on top with the colored pencil, I'll use some of my lighter colors. And if my dark isn't dark enough, then those lights are not going to show up. Let me make sure I didn't, oops, come on. You go away. Okay. Oops, I guess I should turn the volume on so I can actually see if I get a notification I need from our moderators. Again, just watching the direction of those feathers. And this one is another Creative Mark Mimic brush. This is a quarter inch flat. See how I'm just watching the direction of those feathers. Actually, some of that is darker. We can go ahead and start pulling some of the black in. I'll do a lot of that with a flat brush. We'll switch to this guy for the little stuff. These feathers switch direction. And that's what you really wanna watch. If you wanna make it look like the feathers, the, that you've got that more three-dimensional look, you don't need every detail exact, but you do need to watch the direction they're going. Like right here, these start going, you've got long horizontal lines because of the way that the feathers are aiming at the viewer. Get 
painting. See, I'm keeping this pretty sketchy. It is a little bit watery though. I'm gonna soak some paint back up with the, or water with the brush. So I'm just dabbing it on my paper towel and then soaking it up. I don't care if it's perfectly even. If some areas are darker, great. It looks like unintended, like I shaded without actually having to shade. So I don't need it perfect. That needs a little bit more water though. If you start getting dry marks, like what I'm getting here, that just lets you know you need some more, more water on that brush, like I do now again. A little too much, so let's pull some of that back up. So I'm just taking my brush, I dab most of it off, and I'm just gonna lift some of that. Gets a bit heavy-handed there. And I can put another layer to darken this up with the watercolor, or I can do that with the colored pencil. Either way would work. And I'm, as I go and fill this in, see how I'm not getting it completely solid? I'm leaving some areas where it's a little bit lighter. That actually is on purpose. It ends up adding detail without having to put in a bunch of work trying to get perfect detail. While we're working with the black, let's go ahead and come up here. little bit more paint and water on the brush. Now the highlight, if I fill it in with too much black, it's not the end of the world because I can use opaque col uh, lighter colored pencils to fix that. But I'm just gonna leave it to make my life a little easier if I can. But like I said, if it happens and you fill in where you didn't mean to, it's not a big deal. The colored pencils can fix so, so much. It's got this darker ring, it's a little thinner around here. He's got his little eyebrow. Look, already he's starting to come together. Let's see, we've got a little bit darker in through here. And then we've got this dark area back here. And we'll have a lot of these little hairs sticking out. Remember, the harder you push with your brush, the thicker your line is going to be. So even though this is a larger brush at a number six, I can still get a thin line as long as I'm using a really light hand. If you push hard, you get a thick line. He's got all these little wispy guys sticking out. I'm gonna do a little bit more with the, the brown for a bit and then we'll come back to the black. Oops, we're gonna dab some of that water off. Just a solid color right now. And don't worry, if you find yourself worrying too much about color or getting really hung up on that, that isn't what's gonna make the difference in your work looking good. It's about your values. Are your darks dark enough, your lights light enough? I don't care if I have the perfect brown, but is, are my darks dark enough and lights light enough? That's what I need to focus on. I'm gonna pull some black now and mix that right up along this edge and pull that down. And let that blend while that, that brown paint is still wet. I want that to just give me a nice soft blend together. Let those colors bleed a little bit. Uh, 
Oh, he's already coming out cute. I'm, I'm excited for this guy. I think he's going to be a really good one. Look at the little wispy horn there. I don't want to go too crazy because I've got to come back through with lighter browns, but I can get the hint of some of these darks. I'm going to darken up that edge again to get some nice variation in there. Oops, that's paint on it still. Let's rinse that off. I just want to take a little bit of water right around that edge so it fades. Now that's interesting. Dolphin Soul said, last week Lisa says, don't use straight blacks, use purples, and now she is. Depends on what you're doing. There is never and always. One of the reasons that I didn't want, want um, last week straight blacks on that piece is that I was using a lot of oranges. Black and orange don't play nice together. Brown and, and black look wonderful together. So it depends. There's never a hard rule. I'm definitely not one of those artists who's like anti-using black paint. Um, I normally want it mixing with something else and that's what we're having happen here. I'm letting it mix in with my brown. So at no point is it like just this harsh flat black. But that's actually a good point. It, it depends on what it is. I mean, even if you look at the Patreon uh, project we had this week, the cichlid fish, that was bright yellows and oranges. I had a buffer of purple before I got into the blues and the blacks because black up against orange and yellow, that comes out looking pretty, that, that's hard to make look good. And I don't care if any of these feathers are in the exact right place. Close is good enough for this. Remember, most people are not going to see your reference photo. I mean, you guys see mine because obviously, but you don't need to show people your reference photo. It doesn't, they'd have to see the photo to know your feathers weren't exact. That was always one of the things that made me laugh. I remember when I first started posting on social media, you'd always get some person that, I don't know if it was like an insecurity on their part or what it was. Well, we need to see your reference photo. Let's see your reference photo. Even in the early days of YouTube, when I wasn't teaching, I was just sharing, like, look what I painted. Well, I need to see your reference photo. No, you really don't. Um, why? So you can be judgy? Because I know that's where you're going with this. Don't feel like you need to post your reference photo because I intentionally will choose for things not to look like the reference photo too. Um, you don't have to to show everyone that photo, the work on its own. What does your paint, is your painting good on its own? That's what, what we're looking for, your end result. Not that it's exact to the reference photo. The reference photo is a guideline. I'm just gonna get some little hints of feathers in there with the darker brown. And that darker brown is the same brown I used here, by the way. The difference, actually, I'm getting enough water on here. I wanna dry this to tighten the paper up. But um, I'm using less water, so that's why it's darker. So the reason that I, I dried that there, it had nothing to do with needing the paint not to blend together or bleed together or nothing to do with that. It was simply my paper was warping and I wanted to use the hair dryer to dry it back into place before it decided to dry on its own to warp. Also, while that cools down, that's perfect timing. We've got Karen Montoya sent a, oh, oh, do they know? Wade knows his head's popped up. A super chat. Come on. Thank you, Karen. Oops. Come on, bad cow. This is perfect because it lets the paper have a chance to cool. Come on, cow. You have to come get it. Come here. Come be brave. 
Okay, that's close enough. I don't need to wear you. Good boys. Okay. Thank you for the drill. Now go lay down. Lay down. Go on. Boys. Sorry for yelling right now. My head's right next to the microphone. Go on. Go lay down. Stubborn dogs. All the way. He's like, but I'm still chewing. It's stuck in my teeth. Lay down. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Okay. Yeah, and if it weren't, back to the reference photo, if it weren't for the fact that I was needing to show you guys what I'm looking at and what I'm choosing to change, like because I'm teaching, it's different, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going to show you. If it's simply, I want to show people, look at the pretty painting I did. You do not have to show them your reference photo. And here's a few other tips. You don't need to tell them how long it took. People always will do the, non-artists will do this. How long did that take you? Now, they're not necessarily meaning to be rude, but what they're essentially asking is how much do you make an hour? Because when they find out like, oh, you only spent eight hours on that, you're charging $1,200, oh my God. No, you're not paying for eight hours of work, you're paying for a lifetime of experience. Like those are not the same thing at all. So don't, like certain questions you'll get from people, you are not, you don't owe them anything. Um, and the people who want, who want to see a reference photo are demanding to see it, those aren't people who are gonna buy from you, those aren't customers. I don't care if I make those people happy. So that just a few things to keep in mind. Don't let it bother you when somebody asks for these things, but also don't feel like you owe them, like that you need to um, bend over backwards for everything that somebody asks. Okay, so we're getting into a little, oops, I'm gonna go with a little bit more water there because I want that to be a little bit lighter. There we go. Now the areas I want lighter, I'm not, I don't need to add um, white to them because that will make them more opaque, the white that I have anyway. What I'm doing is just adding water so that it's more translucent. And letting the white of the paper show through. And I can go a little bit darker than what I want that end result to be here just because I'm gonna go on top of the, I know it's gonna be white colored pencil over this. See how these curve a little bit? Just watch the direction that the, the feathers are moving. I'm gonna add a little bit of blue for under these cooler areas. And I'm gonna take a bit of brown right along the edge of the black. I can really go over the black too. Doesn't really matter, it's just gonna make it darker, which is fine. But this way I get a transition from the black before it hits the white. That little extra detail will look so good. Now, a lot of this is going to get cut off by the mat, but I would rather fill in a bit too far, like come down farther than what I need the, the end piece to be, so that nothing, is, I don't have a white border that the mat is not quite covering. Same thing, we've got a little bit of brown over here. And I don't care if I'm perfect with this one's reddish brown, this one's more of a, a yellowy brown. I don't care, I just want some variation. Honestly, that's all I, I I'm looking at, looking for here. Okay. Let me get a little bit more brown right around the edge there. Wade, stop. Good boy. See, he's smart. It's just a matter of whether or not he chooses to listen. He knows exactly what I'm telling him to do. Well, okay, that's actually stretching it. Wade's not the smartest animal, but he does know some of the things I'm telling him to do. Gibson's a, a genius. It's kind of scary how smart that dog is. Start darkening a few areas up in here and see how these are the side to side ones. Let that lighter color show through. Some of the black. A little bit around the eye there. 
Now we've got this gorgeous lavender around his eye. I'm going to switch to the round brush and I'm going to use, looking through here, this color is pretty close, close enough anyway, so the second one over. And that's pretty much, I mean, when I do this, it, look how important that is. That just looks black. I need to have this to look at and see it's this color right here. This is why having one of these little guys is so handy. It's also part of why I have no interest in buying more colors. Whenever I get started with a new medium, I always wanna buy every single color. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty full and happy with what I have on the watercolor because that's enough to sort through. I'm gonna come on top of this with white to give it the light color over it. So we'll have some blue now. I'll use the same blue I used earlier. It's gonna look weird till I go over it with the white and shade it properly. So don't let that scare you, it's not staying that way. Now I need a decent amount of water I'm mixing in with my blue at this point. Let's move you over so you can see a little bit. I'm just thinning it with a lot of water, but I've gotta dab some of that off on my paper because that is going to be too dark. See how it's just a very, very light blue. I can go a little bit darker there. And this is another area. It's not the exact same blue as my photo. I don't care. I just need some variation. Missing a whole spot of brown right here where the beak is. Let's fill that in now. We've got this darker shadow that runs right through here. It's a really pretty reddish brown. I'm gonna pull a bit more of that. I'm mixing these two. Again, right, that reddish brown I'm putting right around the black. And what else do I need? I can do a little bit more black here before we switch over to colored pencils. Let's just fix the shape on some of these. A few little wisps in here. find some of these feathers a little bit while I've got this black out. Got a little bit of black right around the ends of some of these feathers. So I'm just cleaning up a little bit of detail and then most of that will be done with the colored pencils. The watercolor goes on way faster, so if I can block in a lot with this, that I'm not gonna worry about that. That's easier to get clean with the pencils. Let's see, got a little bit right around here. And a bit more brown. 
Now you want to make sure anywhere where you're using colored or the watercolor, you've got to have that done before you start with the colored pencil. Because once you start with the colored pencil, the colored pencil is not going to stick on top well. And even if it sticks on parts, it's not archival. You don't want to put a water-based product on top of a wax or oil base because it's some of it will start to rub off over time. Okay, where else do I want a little bit more color saturation? That's all I'm doing now. I mean, everything's pretty well mapped in. A little bit of this, oh, I need more water. That is dragging on the paper. Right around the edges of the black, I'm putting this, this reddish brown on both sides. A little too much water, so let's pull that out just so I get that more feathery look. Let me get the color saturation a bit darker over here as well. See how the feathers curve here? Oh, I forgot this entire area has more black. I need to come back through there a bit. A little bit more of the dark right around this eye. Okay, then I'll get some black. So I've got these little lines here. I'm going to paint those in. You can do that part with a colored pencil too. It doesn't really matter. I think the watercolor just goes a little bit faster. A few little wisps sticking out here. I think that's probably good enough that I can start with the colored pencil. So let's try this and I'll switch over to pencils. I lied. I need more blue around that beak. Well, I've got that exact blue out. Let's grab some of that. Just in through here. Now I'm going to switch over. I would play the ad of the boys, but I haven't, I have to update those with my new Patreon prices. So you're just going to have to watch me walk around on my very long to-do list is to update all of the ads or make new ones really. So all of these guys can back. And let me grab the pencils. I'll probably be using more polychromos than anything else just because they sharpen to such a fine point. You're going to lose that camera um, now that the pencils are in the way. Actually just turn that camera off just so there's less strain on the computer. Um, which one is that? Palette. So you've got a blank spot, but less cameras running make the computer a little bit happier. Yeah. 
do I ever mix watercolors to make a different color? I was doing that through this whole thing, like completely mixing two browns together, mixing, yes, all the time, all the time. I need pencil sharpeners. Where did I put the ones I was using all week? Huh, they're missing. I cleaned so things are not where they were. Okay. My thing is being weird. Hold on. One second. Weird. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with black because it's easy. Once I find it. Okay, let's get some black. Let's get an opaque white and a lighter blue. And that is, when I said black, I didn't mean gray. Somehow I ended up with gray. Where did the black go? Like I just had it. And it suddenly turned into gray in my hand. That was very weird. Spooky ghost story, Halloween time, I guess. Pencils are just swapping places. Haunted pencils? That sharpener does not work for luminance. So I've got a light blue with luminance. This is my genuine cobalt blue. I've got white with Derwent Lightfast because that's gonna be more opaque. Actually, this one's not even white. This is Arctic, close enough. And then my polychromos black and, oh. that there. Now I can clean up my edges. See now it's really easy to clean everything up. Actually I need a pale yellow too. Who has a good shirt? Actually it's not yellow but this one is my brown ochre 10%. It'll actually work nice. Yep. Bring that line out just a bit here. Going right around those edges. And then where there was a little smudge, I can go right over that with a pencil. And I need a, let's see, you will work. This one is uh, burnt ochre. I'm gonna do that right on the top so it's a little bit darker right under that upper lid and that'll fade out into that lighter color. I'm just gonna let those overlap a bit. Oops. all over where the black watercolor was. I'm gonna go over that with a pencil too. It's gonna to make it super dark. I'm gonna pull the black right up to that so it's not this obnoxiously bright. And then I'm gonna go back over that with my blue. So see how now it's a much more muted, glossy look. Much better. Looks like we've got a little bit of blue right on the edge. I'm gonna use white over that lavender color. My goal is not to make it white, it's just to make it lighten a little bit. And it's not a perfect circle, so let that be a little wiggly here. Okay, and then I'm gonna clean that up right on the inside there with the black again. 
and see how fast this goes because I've got this nice watercolor base. Like the color is just so rich so quickly. Okay, now I'm gonna switch over to my blue and let that start fading out as I work my way out. Actually, while I'm at it, I may as well grab my brown pencils. Um, let's see. I'm gonna use the Carandosh. This one is Castle Earth is what I'm looking for. That one, so it's just a nice dark brown. I've got, this is Caput Mortem, that'll work. What else do I need in there? It's kind of a cream. I think the one I have out will work fine. Maybe a little bit of a yellowy tone. Do I have, let's see, what are you? Brown ochre, eh, that's a little bit green. Don't think that's quite what I'm looking for. Raw umber, let me see where my sample paper is. I can test it, if I can reach it. Oof. Yeah, eh, eh, maybe, I don't know. Let's see what else I've got. I think the, yeah, we've got some really good browns with I want light fast. Let's grab, I'm grabbing Ruby Earth, which is like a reddish brown. It's very similar to Caput Mortem, honestly. And I still need that yet kind of a golden color. Yellow ochre, maybe, maybe a little yellow ochre mixed in would look good. So that little handful of color should give me what I need. So the reason that I'm choosing most of these, if I, ideally, because I'm doing a lot of detail, I really like the polychromos for this, but the color, sometimes there's just a better color that I'm looking for, closer to what I want in another brand, and so that's why I've chosen those. Okay. Let's see. So this one, back to my brown ochre 10%. That's actually really good for out here. And I've got a piece of glassine under my hand so that I don't get the oils from my skin anywhere on the work. No smudging either. Just have to play around and see which color I like. That one's good for some of it. Watching the direction of these feathers. We've got a more defined shadow that comes around the eye right here. And then I'm gonna switch to a lighter color. I want more of a golden. That yellow ochre is not gonna work for me. I need a lighter brown. Not any of you. How odd that like with all these pencils you think there'd be like the absolute perfect color in here somewhere and it's not again color is not that big of a deal I'm just looking for a golden tone oh you will work this one is sandstone so I'm looking for a golden color that isn't too yellow yellow and that's what I'm trying to avoid so sandstone that is it that is perfect it's kind of an orangey that'll work for me now, if you've used watercolor anywhere on your work and you go over it with the colored pencils and you think, hey, I wish I could use my odorless mineral spirits to blend this out, you can. It will not affect the watercolor underneath. You can totally go over it if you need to. I won't be doing that on this one, but you could if you wanted to. It does not mess up the watercolor. Let's grab some white. Doing drawing Chinese white would be great. <clears throat> Have that over here. Because we want this to be soft anyway, that thicker pencil will actually work well. Oh yeah, much better for this. It's a nice soft look. And I'm pushing really hard there. I'm definitely burnishing to get that look take the blue and break that up a little bit so it fades out and it's not that his feathers are blue it's just that the way he, they're more of a grayish tone but with the blue well the photographer probably hyped up the blue in here but I like how it looks so I'm including it 
Um, but you've got, it's mostly going to be the way that the shadows are hitting. To my own knowledge, these guys don't have actual blue feathers. Just lighten some of that up. Sandstone color is really a nice addition. That kind, of, that orangey tone, without being so too in your face orange. Let's take the black and define the feathers here. See, I'm just kind of working my way around the eye. I started with the eye and then we'll go all the way around. Some little wispy feather guys there. white first over some of the blue. Soften that up. And then I'm going to come back through with, let's do a little bit of the sandstone and probably some cup mortem for these darker areas. See how great this is? I love that there are areas where I'm like, oh, I should have filled that in with a little bit more watercolor. <laughs> color pencil will fix it. Doesn't even matter. You do not have to be good at watercolor to do this mixed media. Watercolor is definitely one of the more difficult mediums to master. I would certainly not say that I've mastered it by any stretch of the imagination. I can make pretty paintings. That is a, a medium I haven't worked that much in until more recently, and even then not that much. So, but it, that doesn't mean you can't make something super pretty, especially if you're doing it as mixed media with watercolor or colored pencil over it. It, it fixes so many things that might have gone wrong. I mean, one of my favorite pieces right now that I have hanging in my own office is a watercolor. It's a fox in watercolor um, and colored pencil on top. I love it. And that was right when, towards the beginning of me starting to play with watercolor. So, you, um, but the, it's because of the colored pencil that I liked it so much. It made it very easy to fix anything that wasn't exactly how I wanted it. See, like here, I didn't get enough of these little black areas. No big deal. I can go over with the pencil now. Um, let's get some more of that sandstone right along the edge. Pull some little feathers in there. And that variation, I don't care if you use the perfect brown, the perfect orangey tone, the perfect whatever. It's just that you want variation in there. That is, that is the key. And let's do a little bit of castle earth around the edge. This is my, my Karen Dosh Luminance. It's probably my darkest brown brown. Like it's almost black, it's so brown. And this pencil is weird. It was, I remember the first time I used Caran d'Ache pencils or Caran d'Ache luminance. It is the only one that is almost a dry scratchy feel. The end result looks just as good as all the other pencils, but it definitely feels different than everything. Even right now, like it's very scratchy, but not scratchy in a, like it's, you know how if you've used certain uh, cheap graphite pencils or they'll get like nuggets in there that scratch the paper. That's not what's happening. It's just, Almost like it's a charcoaly dry feel to this pencil. It's a very odd. I have no idea why that pencil is different. And I remember years ago, I had asked Karen Dosh about that and the person commented or the, whoever the contact was I emailed said, oh, that was something that they were working to fix. Well, it's been, I started using Karen Dosh Luminance, what, in 2014, 2015, like a long time ago. And yeah, it never changed. I don't mind. I mean, the, the pigment's great, but it is it does have a weird chalky feel to it. Let's take another brown to, oh, I need to sharpen that. Let's pull that in a bit more. So that transition from the black to, um, between the white and the black has a bit of brown in between it. switching back and forth between some of these lights and darks. Now, any of my Caran d'Ache Luminance or my Derwent Lightfast, those are gonna be more opaque pencils, whereas the Polychromos is gonna be, it mostly just goes darker, it's more translucent, so it's great for making things darker. But it doesn't, you, in most color cases, it's not gonna lighten it up. So just keep that in mind, depending on what you're going for. Like, see how that shows up so well that I just did? Because that's a super opaque pencil. That same color or something very similar 
in the polychromos is going to isn't really going to show up as much and that's not necessarily a bad thing you just need to know it's a different thing depending on what look you're going for hint of some of these feathers. I don't need them exact. I just want to go for semi-close. And I like the, the polychromos too because it, the bean that it gets so much sharper and it hold, it's a harder lead, so it hold that, holds that point. I can't talk better. So the details on that, each of those brush strokes looks much smoother than the softer pencils of the other brands that I'm using. And again, it's not that that makes it a better pencil. It's just a difference you want to be aware of. So depending on what look you're going for. Whoops. And then you can throw it on the floor. Oh, that didn't get too far, luckily. And like here, I want this to be a little bit lighter, so we'll use the sandstone and I'll come back through with some white. See if the feathers change directions. Now, let's say I had areas that I want to bring out bright, bright highlights of white. I can't use my watercolor for that. And you may be thinking, well, I was using watercolor, like the Doc Martens PH, what is, I can never get it right. Doc, P, Dr. PH Martens Bleed Proof White, that stuff. That is a water-based product. I can't put that now over the colored pencils. If I wanted to paint white on top of this, then I'm gonna wanna use my Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture from Powder Blender. But if I had not started colored pencil yet, then I could have used this stuff first before I started colored pencil. So you just need to make sure you're doing it in the right order. Now this area is not standing out as much as I would like. And it's not because it's not light enough. It's because what's next to it is not dark enough yet. So often when your lights don't seem light enough, it's because the darks are just not dark enough that are right next to it. So we will come through now and start getting some of that, those darks in. I'm using sandstone again, which is that really pretty golden orangey tone. Technical term there, golden orangey. They really should let me name colored pencils. They have the best names. Every purplish red color would be called magenta. Magenta one, magenta two. Or just magenta, you guess. This would be a perfect job for me. No one would be frustrated at all. A little feather. See, I'm just going, kind of working around what needs to be darker, what needs to be lighter. dark right on the edge here. I'm going to pull that. I'm using Castle Earth. Use that Castle Earth and pull some dark definition in too. Don't overdo this, the dark in here. We just want a few spots. I'm gonna darken this up and I want these to be wispy, so I'm gonna let them overlap a bit. And make it a little bit thicker than what I've currently got. Especially right here needs to widen up quite a bit. And that is with black. See, with very little effort, look how dark that is. If I did not have a watercolor base, I was just putting this black pencil over the white paper, it is not gonna look that dark. My chair is stuck on my carpet there, hold on. Hold on 
one second. It's getting hot in here. Let me change the temperature without messing with all of your Amazon devices. Whoa, it's 68 degrees outside right now. I don't think it's been that cold in Texas since last winter and this isn't gonna load. Great, there we go. This is one of my favorite mixed medias to work at. Like I'm finding myself, I wanted to sit here with the biggest stupid grin on my face because it's so much fun. Got some little wispy guys here. Let's sharpen that pencil. And actually, if you look at the reference photo, we've got these rows here and here where these feathers are more defined. So I'm gonna define some of that with the blue first in those little rows. And then just very lightly with the black, you could also switch to a gray, but black is what I already have out. So this will work just fine. I'm just using a light hand. And now I'm gonna do some of the little wisps that are sticking out here. I'm gonna do a few more around that edge making sure that they overlap give them a little fluffy face okay and i'm using this one is ruby earth i'm going to go around the edge of some of these between the black and the brown or the lighter brown i should say i'm pushing pretty hard for most of this at this point because i want it to be really smooth switch to castle earth so it's not straight black so we really at this point it's not just about adding details it's about adjusting our values get those darks darker are the lights light enough well really the lights are light enough it's that the darks next to them aren't dark enough and so they don't look as light as they should be reddish brown tones right in through here Let's switch over to white let's clean this up Pushing really hard with that pencil. Let's sharpen that. So like these areas, this is light enough. It just doesn't look like it because it's what's next to it isn't dark enough yet. So now I can come through with these darker colors, although that gets covered with the matte, so I don't need to spend too much time there. If I burnish the white over it, it just softens that whole feather up. This looks harsher and the, that camera always makes it look a little bit harsher than it looks in person. Mine is a slightly softer looking. And then the same thing, we're gonna come in through this. I'm gonna use that sandstone color first in between the black and the brown areas, or black and the white, I'm sorry. And then this darker area, let's switch that ruby earth will work fine. 
let's darken that up. That gets cut off by the mat too though, so I'm not gonna spend too much time worrying about that. And then let's darken up the black areas as well. Some of those can be a bit bigger now. This is a way, if you have used colored pencil in the past and you get frustrated that it just takes so long, watercolor underpainting, my gosh, does that make things go faster. Like the color saturation is so good and so dark in a way like without, that takes a long time to get colored pencil to do that um, on its own. Not that it can't be done, it just takes a lot longer and I know a lot of people don't like how long colored pencil takes. That is certainly a way you can solve that time issue. Dropping pencils. Now I'm just looking through little areas that I want to darken or lighten. So like this here, let's darken that. And I'm gonna add a bit of blue detailing in here in that shadow. Pull some out in here as well. lighten this area of his eye just a bit along the bottom. You can't really tell on the that camera, but it is it's there. And this whole area can actually be a fair amount darker. Now it's really easy to make a couple of pencil strokes and think, wow, that looks like feathers, that looks great. And then make all the pencil strokes looking the exact same. Variation, switch direction, look at the photo, where does it switch direction? I'm use a bit of Kapet Mortem here to get some color saturation over that black. I do the same over here. We've got these little lines that go along the back of his head. Some of them need to be short and thicker. Let's see, use a little bit of Castle Earth in here and do a little bit of Capet Mortem. See how these feathers curve up and away from his head. Get a few light guys in here. I'm gonna go over that with the sandstone. So they're lighter because I put the white down first, they'll show up even better, but white was too bright. Now this area, I've got a little smudge and I can see where it came off on my finger. I wanna fix that, let me take an eraser. I need to make sure that there's nothing on the eraser, so I'm actually gonna take the back of it and make sure that's clean. So I can lift that. There we go. Now one of the things you can do, if you're doing something like this and you are trying to keep the background white, but it doesn't, if you get a smudge somewhere, you can take your, um, 
your watercolor and splatter. Do it like a, a cool splattery effect in the background with some blues and browns or whatever. And that will hide any smudges. Now, I know I said don't do watercolor after you've already done the colored pencil, but in this case, I would just wipe off anywhere where watercolor might have stuck on top of here. Or, or you could even take a clean piece of paper, cut it out the size of the owl, so when you splatter, none of it gets on the owl. But that is an option if your background doesn't stay light enough. Few little details and we are done with this guy. Make sure that this area here could have more blue too. Push that back. I totally forgot these white feathers. When you sit in front of something for too long, you sometimes start losing, like not noticing things you meant to go back over. Okay, and let me show you what that looks like on this camera because this is a little bit harsh. It always is on that one. And I may, I keep noticing little, little areas where I want some wisps. Okay, let's pull, actually, I've got a little smudge over here as well. Pull that up. So you should be able, able to see a bit better the, the soft look that you're not really getting on camera. So there is the finished little owl. He actually looks really big how I'm holding him here. Oh, I'm happy with how he came out. He is adorable. But he is going to, so that you can see what he will look like with the mat. Oops. There's the mat. He will sit in there like that. So actually, let's pull it over here because that looks really bad on that camera. I do need to sign that still. But he will be like that. That is what you're getting ready to pop into an 8 by 10 frame. Oh, he's cute. I like this guy. He came out really cute. I am really looking forward to the day that we get some webcams or that I could run two of these webcams would also be ideal where it's as good as my video camera because the this looks harsher than what I'm seeing in person for sure. Um, but yeah, he is super cute and look how fast that was. It's 913 so we've been working on this for just over an hour. Well, about an hour if we can't count in all the, the dog. I can't say the things the boys get. but. That is so much work, so much coverage. And yeah, it's a five by seven, but it's still a lot of detail in there. But because of doing watercolor first, it makes colored pencil go so fast. And I didn't even have to blend. I didn't need to use OMS. I didn't have to use a colorless blender. I could have used any of that if I wanted to, but it really didn't need to because I already have that beautiful base layer. So you don't get that grainy gritty look as bad as if you had worked over a watt, just white. This is also great if you are working in a sketchbook, you're, you know, that sort of thing. You can do same thing, the watercolor base layer and then colored pencil details on top to get stuff that's done really quick. Okay, so I will come through and if you guys have any questions. Now, one of the questions I wanted to start with, somebody had messaged me on, I think it was on Patreon or my email. Let me see. I want to go ahead and answer that here though because it was a little bit more than what I want to go over um who was it oh there's thunder again <coughs> okay so i had a question from dorothy who said if i wanted to invest in a small airbrush setup knowing that i would only be using it for cards and nothing bigger than a 9 by 12 could i use one of those that you use with a can of air i guess what i'm asking is would you recommend it if not what would you recommend i would only be using it for backgrounds at this point well what kind of background so what you're talking about the ones that you use a can of air it's like a little setup for they used to be 25 dollars. i don't know with inflation they're probably 70 now but those ones used 
they were, I usually, the only thing I really used them for was misting water. The problem with those little ones that are, you have the can of air, they're single action, which means you can't control how thin or thick your line is. So even if you're doing a background, you only get, it's kind of like using a spray can, a can of spray paint. You have one option, on, off. There's no controlling how light or dark things are, how, well, actually you can kind of control light or dark, but you can't control details. You can't control, like, let's say you're doing a bokeh effect. You can use stencils and that will help, but you're, the, it is a pain and you will blow through that can of air like you wouldn't believe. Plus those little setups, the hoses on those, I don't love because they have a tendency to get these little air bubbles if you leave the screw in too tight. So you're constantly screwing it, unscrewing it, screwing it, turning it on, turning it off. You, and every time you turn it on, air leaks out. I can't believe how fast you can go through those cans of air. If you're just using it to spray water, it's not as bad, but you try to paint with those. When you go to clean your airbrush, you clean it by running air through it. That little can of air does not last you that long for clean, like just the cleaning of the, air, the airbrush. I don't recommend it. I would put your money towards, the, and I know you're not wanting to get really involved in it, but if you want an airbrush, the Greg setup that I use, the link is on my, vid, uh, on my website. I need to double check that those links are accurate because I haven't updated in a while. But the Greg setup is still what I recommend, a small air compressor, and that's gonna be the most expensive part, but it's a small one. It sits right here indoors, it's not loud, and a um, dual action. So what the dual action means is, oh, I'm all tangled up over here. I can control how much air is coming through by how hard I push down here and how much paint is coming out. This is so clogged. Oh God, I did not clean you. Anyway, <laughs> um, those of you who airbrush can cringe with me. Yeah, this is going to be soaking. But pushing down, I can control how, how much air is coming out, pulling back and control how much paint is coming out. You cannot do those with those little can of air. It's a single action. You can't control how much air or how much paint is coming out. <laughs> That's because it's completely clogged. Oh my God. Um, yeah, I'm going to be unclogging that. I've got to soak that in some warm water and some soap. But anyway, those little setups, honestly, for most things, they're a waste of money. I would rather see you take that money. I don't know how much they cost right now, but I would rather see you take that and save it towards something that you're going to get a lot more use out of that's going to last you a long time. Those cans of air, they used to be, before inflation skyrocketed, they used to be like 20 years ago. Uh, God, I'm old when I say stuff like that. And I walked uphill both ways in the snow. I'm from Southern California originally, so there was no snow. But anyway, um, those used to be like $10 for one can of air. I guarantee you they're, they've got to be double by now. But it gets really expensive to go through that. And if it's something that you're going to use, and I know a lot of people think, well, I just want to try it out and see if it'll work. They'll find sets of air, or airbrush kits on eBay for $75. It has the airbrush and a compressor. And yeah, they don't last. They break very, very soon. And so what happens, a lot of those, and the same with Amazon, a lot of those will have great feedback. Yeah, because somebody used it once and it worked fine. They didn't come back when they tried it again in a few months and it, oh, it doesn't work anymore. You can't replace the parts on the, and that's a big thing with those cheapy ones. You cannot replace the parts. You have to replace the entire thing. My Grex airbrush, my needle is a little bit bent right now. I'm good at painting with a bent needle, so whatever, I'm lazy. But I can change, I can easily change out the needle. I can change out the, um, all of it. Every part of this I can buy individually. I, and this one's cool because I can switch in the same airbrush. I can have a point two, three, five, or seven needle in one gun. Whereas with a lot of the other airbrushes, it, even if you can change the needle, you're only changing it to the same size that that gun is. So I used to have to have one for a 0.5 and one for a 0.3. This one, I've got a lot of options and you can add on to different things. Like it, it's just such a great setup. I love that airbrush. And it's more expensive. I mean, the whole setup, when you add all that up, you're looking at over $500 for that and paint and whatever. So you're gonna save but it's worth saving. I would rather see you save and get something that's gonna work well than get something that you, that $75 for the cheap set on eBay or whatever, that could have gone towards the, the nice one the, or Amazon. Um, those cheapy things are just not worth it. And the one with the can of air, single action, you just don't have control. So unless you're trying to get a solid color background, you're fine, but if you just wanted a solid color background, just do it in watercolor. Like there, you wouldn't even need an airbrush for that. So yeah, there you go. There are some, some tips for you there, let's see if we had any questions come in. Um, let's see. We've got Fly Me to the Moon said, please let us know which watercolor pencils you like and why. Okay, so I've used three different types. I've used Faber-Castell, Derwent, and Caran d'Ache Aquarelle. I like them all. 
So they all have pros and cons. The the ones that feel okay, and it's funny because Karen Josh Aquarels, they are the museum aquarels. They're like ours is the true, ours feels like true watercolor. No, yours is gouache. Like I love them. Love them. But they also feel a little bit more like gouache, somewhere between watercolor and gouache, meaning opaque watercolor. They tried to advertise like, oh, ours is the true, true translucent. I'm like, what are you talking about? Even Derwent's is more watercolor like than yours. Um, but they're very expensive and they're not all light fast. And that's one of the things, like I've got the full set, but keep in mind, they are not all light fast. And that's gonna be true with all of these brands. I think that the fabric Castells is the most light fast. There are, were a couple I think that aren't, if I'm remembering correctly. I haven't done a review in a while on them. Actually, I don't even know if I ever did the full review. I should probably do that. I mean, I, I reviewed the individual, but I don't know that I did a full, I don't know. So anyway, your most like watercolor translucent colors, I would say are the Faber-Castell, um, what are they called? The Faber-Castell, whichever one, the, the one by Faber-Castell, I can't think of the name. Um, I'm probably mixing up the names, but their brand. Derwent's, I liked Derwent's, the actual using of them. However, they're the least light fast, but they're also the least expensive. So if you're using it in a sketchbook, if you're going to like make prints, but you don't care about selling the original, Derwent's are wonderful to work in. I actually really did like my Derwent watercolor pencils. I did a lionfish with them, loved the results I got, super happy with them. I, but really, I've been happy with all of the brands I used. The Karen Josh, their purples sucked. They were like, I could not get color saturation on purples. But other than that, I mean, they, they were a beautiful pencil, absolutely wonderful to work with. Um, it depends on what you're looking for. If you wanna save money and just try watercolor paper pencils, go with Derwent. If you don't care if they're light fast, Derwent's are, are really nice. Derwent's and Faber-Castell's are more comparable to each other as far as both of them being that more true translucent watercolor look. Still highly pigmented, but more what you would expect with watercolor, whereas I felt the, the Caran d'Ache version was more opaque, a little bit more like gouache. Still translucent, I mean, it wasn't as, it's not straight gouache, but it's more like gouache than the other two. Um, I don't know if that's helpful at all, I like them all. Let's see, Art of Raven D said, I always tell people no when asked for reference photos, but normally it's my erotic art references, <laughs> but I don't think they wanted to see them because they wanted to critique me. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I could see that being a thing. <laughs> Baby Panda said, for someone wanting to try out watercolors, is there a less expensive option to get your feet wet with? I say get the good stuff and get fewer colors. Get, get it just, I mean, you can mix all of your watercolors and what's cool, you don't need to do the whole pan. So if I were trying to set this up, let me find some and um, save money. I don't even know what I paid for each of these individual ones. I got them from Blick. But these little tubes, they're actually, I made my own. Um, you don't need to get the full, like I spent more getting the overpriced um, Shemika because I liked their tin because I wanted to stick with the whole brand name thing. But that whole thing, you don't need to get that. You can, I mean, I got mine and I filled them with my individual tubes myself, but you don't need to do that. You could get a blue, a red, um, a yellow and mix. Learn to mix from a smaller selection of color. You're gonna learn so much about color anyway in mixing, but I would rather see you get something that's really good. I know Daniel Smith is good. I know um, that one has a good reputation. I don't know what the others. I, again, I'm not an, I would not consider myself a watercolor expert. I'm a colored pencil expert. I am a acrylic painting expert. Watercolor is not one I've, I've spent as much time with. Um, so I, I don't know how helpful I am there, but get, just a, a few, look, these little tubes last so long. Like this color, cause you just need this tiny little dot and that color goes a long ways. So I'd say get three tubes of something good instead of a whole bunch of crap. Because what happens, and this is one of the reasons honestly that I was hesitant to work with watercolor. I had cheap stuff years ago. I used cheap stuff. The color saturation is terrible. There's no pigment in it because it's cheap. It's hard to blend. It doesn't blend right. It doesn't work right. You need good paper. You need decent brushes. And you can get a small set of brushes like the Mimic, Creative Mark Mimic brushes. Those are wonderful. Like get a small set of that and just work with that. Um, use distilled water. When, and I didn't mention that earlier on this live stream. I'll, uh, maybe it did. You want to always use distilled water because um, tap water has all kinds of chemicals and crap in it. You don't want, we don't know what that's gonna turn, what colors that's gonna change the artwork into over time, so distilled water. But fewer colors is the way I would go than a whole bunch of crap, because you use a whole bunch of crap. I didn't use colored pencil, or use watercolor for years because I thought I hated it. No, I was using crap. The, watercolor is so much more dependent 
on quality materials than almost any other, any other medium. I can use pretty crappy colored pencils and get good results with them. I can use, for, I mean, I still recommend getting, getting the good stuff and getting fewer colors, but I can make that happen. I can't make that happen with colored pen, or with watercolor. I cannot make crappy watercolor truly look good. And you will occasionally see videos of YouTubers who do the whole sensationalized, here's Crayola versus this. Okay, it's interesting and it's entertaining, but it's also not realistic because those YouTubers are generally professional artists they can make something look good with a cup of coffee and a paintbrush. So you can't really compare yourself in many cases with what they're achieving. So yeah, I would say fewer colors, but quality, you're going to have a better idea if you like the medium. And the, it's just so much about it, how it blends, how it's everything. There's just the pigments. It's not even just about being pigmented. Good stuff, fewer colors, that is what I would recommend. Okay. Um, Python said, uh, I heard a quote a few months ago. It went something like, every child is an artist, not everyone keeps it. No matter how scribbly a child's drawing is, encourage it, um, is encourage, help, help them keep it. Absolutely. I believe it was Picasso that said something about every child being an artist. Um, the trick is to not outgrow. I forget how it's worded, but I think that was a Picasso quote. Um, let's see. Dream of Lamb said, once you find a reference photo, how do you decide what medium you will use? So mine is a little bit different because it's, I'm trying to rotate because of my Patreon lessons and my videos, I'm trying to constantly rotate, trying to keep everyone happy. I found out recently, because Patreon now has a thing for collections, and so I put all my acrylic paintings, my, it is in their own category, colored pencil, and now I realize I do not have enough watercolor or ink tints, so I'm gonna be working on that. But point is, I try to rotate so there's something for everybody. Um, yeah, you stop, sir. I just had a look and he stops chewing at his feet. But anyway, um, it's a little bit different for me to answer that than I think the average person. But sometimes, wait, stop itching your feet. Uh, you're making it worse. But sometimes it's, like, let me see. Let, let's think of an example. Acrylic paints, if I want something that's really detailed and really large, I'm gonna go with acrylic paintings. I can get that done, acrylic oil. I can get that done way faster. Acrylics I'm faster with than any other medium. I can get that done very quickly. Um, colored pencil, something I want lots of detail and it's like a, a macro shot or a close up of something. I really like colored pencil for it. It's just for the fine, fine detail, that's great. But for me, it's a little bit weird. It's not an easy thing to answer because I'm, I'm trying to rotate constantly. It's more about, okay, I need to do something in watercolor this week. I need to do something with acrylic, like a specific medium. I'm looking for the medium and a reference photo that I wanna paint with that. I kinda do it in the reverse. So that is not a helpful answer. So there you go. There's me rambling and not helping at all. Uh, Python said, I saw a Reddit post about a super snooty gallery owner. She literally insulted a painter's artwork and tried to make the artist join her painting class. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a little, I have met gallery owners. Gallery owners are an interesting thing. They kind of remind me of art professors in college. They think way higher of themselves than they should. Like just cause you've got the job doesn't mean you're an authority on art. Um, cause there are a lot of professors in college that should not be teaching anything. So, but yeah, you get this weird like elitism out of it. I knew a gallery owner. I think she's back too, which is weird. But anyway, I displayed my work at her gallery once. And this is, I've told this story before where people were like literally, the actual word literal, not the current colloquial version of it. But people were leaning on the artwork that were on the walls because we were, the band, my band was actually playing that night, were playing and people were leaning on the art. She didn't care, she didn't do anything about it. But it was funny to me because she picked up one of my paintings or one of them was supposed to be displayed there and it was done on a, um, a, what was it, board, one of the board, cradle board, uh, what is the word for it? It's like a masonite board, but something like that. And her, it's framed, so it's perfectly fine. That there's nothing, her snooty attitude about, oh, it's on that. Lady, your own son, who you're trying to sell his work for thousands of dollars, paints, paints with newspaper print glued and red paint tossed on it. Not only is it ugly, it's not cool, it's not archival. He's using materials that are like, and you're worried about my cradle board? Really? The snooty, like, it is bizarre how some of these gallery owners, and not all of them are like that, but 
a lot of, a lot of them are. It's really kind of a funny, like, so if you ever go to talk to a gallery owner to show them your work and you're getting that snooty attitude, sometimes they may give you feedback that is truly valuable, that can truly help you grow as an artist and you want to listen. But sometimes they're just so, that elitist, um, like one of the things that gets me is that some of these gallery owners, they only do like abstract, more impressionism, that's what sells for them and that is totally fine. But that doesn't mean that you need to try to tell every artist that they need to paint in that style too or that there's something like invalid about their about doing realism because realists we get a lot of crap from that from gallery owners because they're looking for that more abstracty weird artsy thing and i don't know if it's just because they themselves aren't typically artists or they're not good at i don't know what the thing is but yeah don't take it personally it's kind of like really a normal thing with them now that's not to say i have seen artists who are atrocious they put no effort into getting better with their work and they would go into a gallery and be like here's my super expensive I, I think you should you can sell this and you should be honored to have my work and it's like dude you suck like bad like you've put no effort into your craft so it can go both ways I mean gallery owners I'm sure can tell you plenty of stories of hilarious artwork that came in and it's like it's not that these artists couldn't be good it's that they're not putting in the effort uh, god is that not just the world these days of uh, I want I want top dollar I want like I want to make tons of money but I also want to put in no effort to improve my own skills at whatever it is um yeah anyway that is a rant I could go on for some time um let's see Dorothy said do you recommend the small airbrush setup with a can of air just oh Dorothy you're here okay I already answered your question so hopefully you saw my answer um yay uh let's see Python said, I bought some, some gal, gal clade. I can't say that. I know what it is and I can't say it. Uh, I like my oils a bit stickier. Any tips on using it or in your case, liquid? So I use liquid. I've, I've used that stuff once. I think it came in a smart art box once years ago. Um, you, I just use it to thin out the paint. Um, if you like it to be a little bit stickier, a little bit tackier, when it sits out for an hour, once it's been on the canvas, it's gonna tack up and you can continue going into it. The more liquid you add, obviously, the thinner and more slippery your medium is going to be and more translucent. So you've got a few things happening there, the more of the liquid or mixing medium you add. More translucent, slippier, slippier, slippy, slipperier. Am I making up words again? Um, but yeah, you use not as much. Now, it's not gonna dry as fast if you're not using as much as your of your fast drying medium, but um, the more you use, the, the more it's like slippery is the best way to word that if it's if there's too much. But if you let it set for like an hour, it'll tack up, it'll kind of get sticky, and you can put your next layers on without getting too much of that mud. Oh, I missed a oh, I missed a super chat from D Lynn Creative Arts. Boys, there's a super chat. Really? No, no one's gonna respond to the super chat. There we go. They're a little slow. They weren't expecting it. I think they think that once I start talking on, like when I'm done with the actual painting portion that they're like, it's over, we're not getting anything else. There you go, good boys. Say thank you, D Lane Creative Arts. Sorry, I missed that. And you're gonna choke on it, really? You know you could just eat it instead of breathing it in. Well, that's what you get for eating it too fast. Okay, go lay down, 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 down or go as slow as humanly possible. Oh, no, we got a stretch. Don't fart. Every time he stretches like that, I'm not, the loudest farts you have ever heard. That dog is just, whew. They don't smell, they're just loud. It's one of those, you're just looking at him going, really Gibson? Okay. Thank you for that. Oh, uh, okay, where are we? Um, D Lynn Creative Arts had said, hi, I love learning all the different underpainting techniques, yay. Stephanie said, can you do more airbrush instruction? I have two airbrushes that I have only used once. I need to. I definitely need to. I like to do them for backgrounds, so yes. Well, apparently I should do instruction on how to clean my airbrush. Um, Dorothy said, can you use watercolor on pastel matte, then colored pencil? You should be able to. So pastel matte, I don't have a ton of experience with. I've used it a couple of times. I definitely liked it, but I don't know if, I'm not sure how much water it can take before it starts to kind of come apart. I know that it handled OMS just fine, but I don't know, because it's it's a weird texture. I, I don't have the answer for you on that one. Um, 
Dorothy said, thank you for such a great answer about airbrushing. Okay, good, you got that. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm all glad that you're already here. I was gonna email you back telling you I talked about it tonight. I meant to email you telling you I would talk about it and never got to it, so there we go. Perfect. Fly Media the Moon said, what would you use the watercolor pencils for? Just de fine details, would you actually wet it after you put it on the paper? So yeah, I've got lessons doing it and that's the easiest to show you if you watch the videos, but I just shade in the area that I want and then go on top of it with water. So very similar to like water soluble graphite where I use the pencil and then I go on top of it with the brush. Now, this is a little bit different than ink tents because ink tents, I don't like to do all of the shading and then blend it out with water with ink tents. I use the blocks and use them like I would a watercolor pan. But with the, because the ink tense comes out really grainy and gritty the way that it sticks to the paper, it's very odd. Um, and not in a bad way, I love it. That's just not the way that I work with ink tents. With watercolor pencils, you can shade with it and it dissolves really, really well, very thoroughly. As long as you're not using a heavy hand, if you're doing a lot of light layers, light hand, not pushing hard, it blends out really, really well. So yeah, I shade it in with the pencil, I blend it out, dry it, and you can put, keep layering like that until you get the results that you want. Um, let's see. <laughs> D-Line and Creative Arts said, I take a, a loud greyhound fart any day over the silent deadly ones. Yeah, when they ate kibble when they came to me, oh dear God, it was so bad. So bad. They're on a raw diet now, no smell. But unless, well, Wade was gassing me. Yeah, we're talking about farts on my live stream. This is classy. But um, yeah, Wade tried to do some of the silent deadly ones the other morning, but I think it's because I... I must have given him something. There was something I gave him that did that to him. Um, let's see. Uh, Python said, I saw a bunch of people bash an artist on Instagram. His abstract pieces clearly took hours, layered oils, and people said he wanted money and put no effort. His style was so unique, sad. You know, people are just jerks. You can paint realism. I actually had a story time. I had a girl, she deleted the comment though. I think she realized she was an idiot, but she left a comment on one of my videos. So I did a video of a giraffe using the Derwent. I think these were my, the first time using the Derwent Light Fast pencils and I made in purple. So he's like, it was a photo that I had taken. I believe that was one of my photos and it was in the daytime with green. And I was like, I already have the photo. I took the photo. So I feel like I already created that art. I want to see him in a night forest he had fireflies and it was purples and so there were purples in the giraffe and it came out really cool love that one i wonder if i sold that one or if i still have that one i have no idea anyway love that piece and i had commented in the video like i've already got the photo i took the photo i want something different now oh this girl ripped me apart that i was just being how did she word it that i was dismissive of people who work in realism and she's so sick of hearing comments like mine being dismissive of every realist artist that's good and i'm like lady go look at my work go look at anything i've taught i have videos talking about why realism like the value in realism but you get people who are just jerks for the sake of being jerks and it's like in her case are you so lazy that you wanted to leave a nasty comment, but you couldn't take the five minutes to go look at, at any of my other work. You just want to attack me because one thing that you took out of context, one thing, and that is the internet today, is just people, they see one thing and the worst part is, is the bandwagon effect. If one person says it, one person rips someone apart, everyone else is like, oh, now I'm brave. I put on my big girl pants. I'm gonna go say something nasty too because that person did. We're all gonna jump all over. It's the mean girl thing all over the, well, mean boys too but like it reminds me of high school all over again where one person starts picking on somebody and everyone else is like oh me too me too me too they're weak attack and it sucks because there is value in every style of art okay i see no value in the person who put a toilet in the corner of the room went, art oh look i spilled tax all over the room and it's an it's an art installation art no that's that's lazy you're not artist you're not an artist you're just you're hmm, i have words for you but when it comes to abstract, when it comes to impressionism, when it comes to pop art, I don't care what style you want, you like it, you're painting something that you like, that you enjoy. No matter what it is, you will get somebody, you can be the most ama do the most amazing realist work. I did a painting, photorealism. Uh, which one was it? I don't even remember what it was. Years ago, a guy got mad at me, or I had said, you, list, you know, fine art or whatever. Uh, LOL, you used an airbrush, that's not fine art at all. And he's going off and he starts trying to rip that apart. And it's like, dude, First of all, it's hilarious when you can see their work, you go look at theirs, they're just insecure because they're terrible. Not that they couldn't be good, but they're having more, they're, they're spending more time ripping other people down instead of trying to improve themselves. Hey, look, it's like the human race in general. 
but that is what we see so often. And I don't, I don't always get abstract work myself, but at the same time, I've seen abstract work that I would love to have hanging in my house. So, you know, the, it's personal preference, but I'm not going to rip apart the artist. Anybody who tries to rip somebody else down for something they created. Now, I may look at something and go, whoa, you need some work. I won't say that out loud. Why would I try to hurt somebody? What, what is wrong with you that just because it crossed your mind, you feel you need to say that to the person? And this happens so often. So when you get people saying nasty things to you on your artwork, and I know this was about something you saw, but you are going to have people inevitably tear your stuff apart. I had one girl, I finally blocked her. And I looked at her work and I was, or her, well, her personal photos, I was like, oh, I can't see now. I'm not going to be mean. But her work was so bad. Like she was doing portraits of like fan art portraits. I don't know why she would pick on anybody. Like where do you get off if your work looks like that trying to tear mine apart? Oh, because you feel insecure. So you're trying to tear me down to make yourself feel bad. I finally just blocked her. She did it a couple of times and it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with your little trying to, to build yourself up crap. But yeah, exactly. I fly me to the moon and said, I say, bravo, you did it. You created something. There is value in creating something in the people who would prefer to tear something down, to tear somebody down, to ruin something, to ruin somebody's mood, to, to make them feel bad because they created something like there's something wrong with one person in this situation and it is not the person who painted something, even if it's not good. It doesn't matter what you created. You just made something that didn't exist. You are creating things in this world that other people aren't even brave enough to try. It is amazing that you picked up that pencil, you picked up that brush. That is amazing and you should always feel proud of that, but you will always have somebody else who didn't put in the effort and so they need to tear you down. I have never once, not a single time in my life, have I had an artist who was good tear me down or make me feel bad about my work. Even if their work was so superior to mine, they had every place, every there's so much room, they could have torn mine down. I have never seen a good artist try to tear somebody else down. Never once. It's only people who aren't good. So when that happens to you, you just need to remember that person can't paint and you're making them feel bad about themselves because they don't even have the, the, either they don't paint at all and they, they're not brave enough to even put in the effort. I'm too busy eating Doritos on the couch, I'm guessing. But the, they're either that or they're just insecure about what they did try doing. A lot of people will, will paint or draw even for a long time and they just never get good because they're not focusing on the right thing. They're just being lazy about everything. And they try to rip down other artists in, for, instead. Again, I have never once, never seen a good artist at, who had any skill at all rip down another artist, never once. Now, there are critiques where somebody submits and we give advice, that's different. But to try to make somebody feel bad, oh, that's just terrible. That person is a crap human. Don't take anything they say seriously. Don't let it tear you down. <laughs> Kelsey said, dang it, now I want Doritos. Oh, dear God, you and me both. Cool Ranch Doritos, I could live off of, but they make me not feel well. So yeah, I barely get them. Oh, that and Pepsi. Like if I could just have those two things for the rest of my life and maybe some chicken uh, taquitos from, from uh, Walmart's frozen section. Oh, that's how I ended up with a lot of health issues. So yeah, anyway. Moving on, um, Art of Raven D said that person could have spent time working on their art, but instead they went to go send a negative comment. Exactly. And it's just constant. Like, it's so weird to me how nasty people are to everyone else on the internet. Like, it is bizarre. That, like, what is wrong with you that you would, I see stuff all the time like because i i joined the bearded dragon groups and stuff like that animal groups and stuff on facebook and the things people do that are are genuinely harmful to their animal i still don't even comment there's plenty of other people who give them advice but it's like the people who they're not trying to help they're just being nasty for the sake of being nasty it's like why why what are you accomplishing um Dolphin Soul said, not trying to be that mean girl just curious what made you decide to do blue when usually you add the the blue tying into the background. This one actually in the background doesn't even have blue. The reference photo, if you look at that, the link's in the video description, it's brown and green. And he looks like he's sitting against, that looks like a lattice type thing that like plants grow up. Um, yeah, the blue would be reflecting from the sky. That is why, and I just liked it. Um, let's see, Python said, I remember the girl who did collages who said painting is not art on YouTube comments. Ye yeah. 
people say some very bizarre like they they get this weird idea they'll set rules for themselves and then demand that everybody else follows the rules they set whether it's controlling the words you use i had someone get mad at me because i call like i'd be painting an owl and i'd be like okay he's going to do this him this he this him, whatever don't gen give him a gender don't use gender terms on a an animal what is wrong with you you can't you don't get to control how i talk i will speak respectfully as much as possible to everybody but the fact that i'm calling an owl a he why does that bother you why is that an issue so yeah it was i've had some of the most bizarre like they demand that they they don't like the tool they don't like that you use the airbrush they don't like like they will find something all the time what was the one earlier i screenshotted a funny comment to send to my friend who is also a youtuber and it's fun to laugh about stuff was it worth sharing hold on let me see if this was one worthy of sharing or if it was too bad i know i was gonna rant about it i just hadn't sent it to her yet um nope that wasn't it did i not screenshot it oh here it is No, that was just a dumb comment. I'm not going to even read that one. Um, but like, you know, I can read that. It was just a, like, why do people even comment and say stuff like that? That's not that bad. But commented on an oil pastel video I had done. And she leaves it. I love oil pastel, especially for plain air. So she she leaves the end comment nice, but she comments the fixatives look suspiciously like acrylic sealer. Looks great, though. Looks suspiciously like acrylic. I linked why are you making an assumption that I'm not using what I said I'm using or you didn't watch the video? It looks suspiciously. People are bizarre. I don't even know why she said that. Um, she may be nice. Maybe I'm just misreading that. But people just say weird things where I'm like, the can of Sennelier, was it Sennelier? Um, their actual oil pastel. I showed it in the video. Oil pastel fixative looks suspiciously like acrylic sealer. Now, are you bashing them? Are you bashing me? I don't know. It's a weird comment. Why? Why? That was that one wasn't that bad. It was just one of those where I was like, why would you even say that? Like, what are you trying to? Oh, a fixative is in the same bottle every other fixative is in. That's suspicious. What? Oh, I don't understand. Anyway, um, have I tried the Hanson Me 10s art boards? I have a few. Um, they got the white ones and they were like the, the boards. Yes, I used it for colored pencil with airbrush background. I really liked them for that. Um, I was worried I wasn't going to get fine detail because it's pressed with the rough side, but I ended up having no problem. I did not have the rough side. Mine were smooth. Was it Canson Me? I'm thinking it was Canson Me 10s and they were white. I've got them in my art closet still. Oops, that just jumped. Where were we? Um... How is the dragon house coming? Good. Um, can I send this to myself? Hold on. I'll email it to myself. We've got time. Let me send a photo and get it onto this computer. Um, I'll show you. I posted it over in, oops, that screenshot. I posted it in the Discord group. So if you're in Discord, that was, well, we talk so much in there, it's probably, it would take a while to find. Um, there's pictures of my snack. Not you. Hold on. So Matt told me he thinks I should go a little bit lighter. And I was kind of tempted to pull some like sagey, greeny, teal colors, like more gray than anything else into some of this. And I may do that. Um, let's see. I need to email. Where is Gmail? Why are you not? Oh, you are at the top. That's why. Um, now let me open the email over here. And I can show you guys where we are on there, where we are, me and the mouse in my pocket. Um, Gmail. I'll just download the one is probably enough. And let's add a image. Give me just a second here. Video, text, media, scene, window, media source. Is that what I did? maybe let's find out nope that wasn't the right way cancel how do I put the image on here why it's probably like right in front of me and I'm just not seeing it my eyes are tired uh, image yes that is exactly what happened okay 
Um, so this is where it's at. This is 120 gallons, so four feet by two feet. Oh, that just wasn't what I was supposed to do. Nope, same thing, stop. Let me shrink that down. Four feet by two feet, um, and that, is that up? Yeah, that's up. So this, it was made by styrofoam, um, foam, and then spray foam. And then I put four coats of just, or grout, so it's 50 pounds of grout, grouted the whole thing, letting it dry for about three days, three or four days between each layer. Then once that was dry, I could go ahead and start painting. So this is what I came up with with the painting. Matt thinks it's a bit on the dark side. My goal was black rocks, but because the dragon is orange, so the plan was to be dark. And I've got, I'll have cactus and plants in there and stuff too. But that's where I got for, that's where I'm at right now. I'm super happy with how it looks, but I may pull a few lighter areas. If I don't like it, if I make it a little bit lighter and I'm not in love with it, it's not a big deal because I can just paint over it. And I used a combination of my airbrush paint, my Createx airbrush paint and Liquitex Basics to get that look. So that is, that is what I've built so far. Super proud of myself on that. Now, the interesting thing with these, people do these builds all the time and they do videos showing you how they do, did them. They use different sealer. I am going to go with Mod Podge Matte because I've used that before and it's, it's safe for the animals. But people post, don't, they post videos on this is how I did it, but they don't typically do a follow-up and like, here's where it started shipping and falling apart because I used bad, like I didn't do things right. So I don't know how well this is gonna hold up over the years. Worst case scenario, well, I can, I did it myself. I know how to patch it up, but I can make a new one. Um, so yeah, that is that is where I'm at right now. Um, this is ready to, I'll, I may do a little touch-up painting to lighten some areas. I may just leave it dark, I don't know. But I've got to do the Mod Podge and then let it set for another week and it's done and ready to go. I need to bake the topsoil so I kill any nasties that are in that and get that clean, or clean the uh, play sand. It'll be a mixture, a 50-50 mixture for the soil. And yeah, it's almost ready. I stuck them in there last night. The paint's dry, so it's safe. But I stuck them in there last night because it feels like it's not that big. Oh my gosh, when you put that dragon in there, you're like, whoa, this is huge. This is really big. So he's gonna have a good time in there. But yeah, I don't know how it's gonna hand, stand up long-term. Some people use the same techniques I used 15 years later, they still look great. And other people, not so much. And so I have some theories. I'm gonna make a video about it. I'll share the theories on why I think sometimes people have it, the grout chip and flake off, whether it be how they mix, and I'm probably one of them who didn't mix it right because I'm not used to using grout. But um, not, I think a lot of people too, when they do the spraying, the acrylic part, they, you use a lot of water and let it run into like all the little um, crevices and stuff that are carved out. Well, that water soaks right into the grout. Grout is not waterproof, so it soaks in. So you're now trapping, if you were to seal it, even though it's dry to the touch on the outside, you're sealing water behind that in the foam. So I let it set for a week. I hope that's enough to let any of that dry out. But I have a feeling that a lot of people don't realize that that paint is sitting in the foam wet and now the humidity inside, like trapped in there, especially once everything gets hot, that is going to really destabilize it. So maybe I'll let it set an extra week, I don't know. But yeah, that's where I'm at. I can't wait for it to be done because 120 gallon tank sitting behind me, that is super, it, the screen's in front of it. It is so inconvenient. So I'm really excited to get that done. Dragon wants his new house too. Um, let's see. Ida Raven D said, wow, that person got mad at you for gendering an animal to be mad. We call our, maybe, our male house finch a she and she's named baby girl. <laughs> um, let's see. Where am I? Let's see, Snow said, I want an airbrush, but the airbrush kit that you use cost 800 for me in Canada. Is there another airbrush kit that's good? Not really, I mean, you can buy things individually. I used to use, I had Stormforce, was that what the old compressor was called? The compressor is your expensive part, so those are always like $350 minimum. Um, some people will use a big, huge, heavy-duty air compressor that's like out for the garage. If, as long as you put a, I don't have one over here, if you put a little regulator thing that it, it pulls the moisture out, you can get away with that. I would not be an enjoyable experience for, for me, but I've known of artists who painted that way, just loud and obnoxious, and I don't do sounds like that. But 
yeah, unfortunately, just save. That is my answer because you can get an Iwata airbrush, but like even this, it's not any cheaper. The cheaper ones don't last. It's not worth it. I would rather you save that money and put it towards something good. And I know that's a lot of money. Trust me, I get it. Wait, just save the money until you can get the thing that is good. Now, that's not to say there aren't other good airbrushes. Sorry, itchy nose. It's just that you're not really saving money either. Like the price of the good ones are all about the same. Now, something you may be able to do is see if somebody on like Facebook Marketplace or something, why is my nose itching so bad? Um, if somebody has, if they're selling a used one, because a lot of people will go in, spend all that money and then realize, eh, I never use it, don't want it. You might be able to find something used. Um, whatever they're selling though, double check the brand. If it's an off brand, do not do it. Don't do it. They're trying. I've also seen people who are like, here's some cheapy thing I bought for $75, but I think I can get 300 for it because somebody's going to be dumb enough to buy it. So, you know, do your research, but that's a possibility. And as long as it's something, they could also be selling something that they know is breaking. So I don't know. You may have to replace hoses and stuff, but I don't know, that's, you've got to decide what's right for you, but those cheaper ones, I don't know of any that are really worth it because the Grex setup is really not that expensive. It's pretty comparable to anything of quality that I've seen myself. Um, let's see, and trust me, I couldn't run out and buy one right now either. I, ugh, trust me, I get it. But we just save until you, you're able to get that. Um, Where were we? We've still got four minutes if you want to bid on the owl. Um, we'll show you again. So that guy is available if you want to bid on him. He is a five by seven. He'll come total size will be eight by 10 when he's in his mat. But, oh, he's so cute. I'm really happy with how he came out. Um, let's see. Where are we? Uh, JT said, hi Lisa, your thoughts on gesso, heavy, clear, or plain old acrylic gesso for acrylic and oil paints on canvas. I use the Liquitex gesso. I don't use, the, they have a basics one. I just use the normal one. I'm not sure what the difference is. Um, Liquitex gesso is, is my go-to. The only time that I would go with clear over normal gesso is if I'm painting on a wood board that like, cause I've had wood paneling that you want to let the wood show through you would use a clear gesso then so that when you paint your acrylic, let's say I wanted to paint that owl on a piece of wood, but I want the wood grain to show. I'm gonna do clear gesso over everything and then paint the owl on it. That way when I paint the acrylics over the owl, the acrylics aren't soaking into the wood. If you don't put a gesso, everything's just gonna soak right in and you're not gonna have, it'll spread out, it's, gonna be, it's not gonna be a good time. So that's when I would use clear gesso, otherwise just normal uh, acrylic Liquitex uh, gesso is what I use. Um, Oops, that just jumped. So like the, and I just varnished them. This actually needs to get sent out this weekend. Um, where is he? Here he is. So this guy was the peacock from the, a couple weeks ago. So he's all varnished now. I just need to wait it. He's a little tacky still because he had his last coat today. But see how, oh that God, that guy looks so good. But anyway, um, the wood grain in the back, if I wanted to let that wood of this cradle board show through, clear gesso, and then I could paint my peacock over it. But because I didn't, I want the blue to show through, or you know, that's what I was going with. Normal acrylic gesso is fine. Um, Clarifying said, our son Conyer laid three eggs this year to let us know we were wrong in referring to her as a he. <laughs> uh, that happens a lot. Yeah, see, Christopher has a setup. He's doing, he's running a hose from the garage to the air compressor. Yeah, you can certainly do that. The problem is you can't change your PSI from inside um, unless you've got some magical, I don't know how you got yours hooked up, but it's just not super convenient. But I have known of artists who did that very thing. So it is definitely a possibility. But I also don't know that you're saving that much money because it's a big old air compressor. Um, usually people who are doing that, they already had the air compressor from doing woodworking or whatever, you know, else. So I don't know. Um, where are we? I think we're just about done. Um, Python said, is the ancient 
saying goes, La Cree paints animals and not people for a reason. No, I actually, I, I mean, I paint people because of the challenge, but I sure don't like most of them, that's for sure. I like, I would say I like other artists. I like you guys. Like, I have fun talking to you guys on Discord. You guys are my favorites. But like in art groups, like public groups or like, yeah, people, even those, well, they're probably not really artists who are being so nasty to people. I don't know. I don't understand why people are being mean. Oh, he says Harbor Freight has six br a six brush set for $169, then get discounts. Well, that would be something to look into then. Um, yeah, Art of Raven D says, I don't like a lot of art groups. Ex yeah, same, right there with you. I like ours is good because we keep the rules where people aren't able to be jerks to each other. But yeah, Joseph says, people, ew. Yeah, I like painting people because uh, it's challenging and I like to, t you know, you like to push your skills. But yeah, I'm more inspired. You're not gonna see any of my, my art versus my inspiration videos with people. That is certainly for sure. Um, people do not inspire me. Um, anyway, we are all done for tonight. Thank you guys so much for joining and I will see you next week. I don't know what we're doing next week. Let me know, those of you over on my Discord, uh, let me know what uh, medium, what subjects you want. You can start leaving those comments now and I'll see what I can do. And let's see, um, real quick Paige said, have you experienced or heard of pencils going old? I have not. Um, I've never had any problem with that. I have pencils from 1995, some old Prismacolors, and they're still fine. So if they're a good pencil, I've not had that problem. But anyway, thank you guys so much. I will, no, I don't even own gouache, Christopher, so I can't do that. Um, I will see you guys next week, and oh, make sure to check out our moderators channel. Thank you so much. Make sure to say thank you to our moderators. They do, they help so much, like so much, and the links to their channels are in the video description. And I will see you guys next week. There's probably more stuff I wanted to say and I don't know what they were. Oh, well. bye. <laughs>